Good morning, all. Sort of. It's almost noon. It's about quarter till, and I'm finally getting out of the house. Usual Saturday ritual, got up, we made breakfast. I had intended to have her get dressed and go to Home Depot with me so we could go pick up all this stuff. As we were finalizing it on the website and deciding which knobs we wanted, which faucet we wanted, et cetera, et cetera, I realized that there was only one thing that was actually available for pickup. Everything else needs to be ordered and it won't be in for a while. We went through and picked all that shit out. So let's see, we ordered a faucet and all the knobs for the kitchen. Then the kitchen, in theory, will be done. Then we got two sconces for the stairway and we picked a new chandelier for in the, which I guess would be considered the dining room area, although we don't have a dining room, we don't use it that way. But there's, of course, an ugly ass gold fixtured chandelier that hums the entire time. And the only time we ever turn it on is when we're decorating and undecorating the Christmas tree because it's so annoying. So that goes and I have, I have to put that in there and I'll do the sconces as well. And it looks like the sink is going to be easy enough that, that I should be able to do it. Although I'm still going to call a plumber and I did find a plumber that I'm going to call, but I'm not going to call him until the stuff comes in. So moving right along. Then whilst we were doing that, and I remember I told you yesterday that the whole push to get us to, to just keep going with the momentum, she went through and she picked out the flooring that she likes. She showed me the couple that she got it down to and, and then I told her which one I liked. So we picked that. So we're probably going to do that and at the very least do the entire living room. But I'm going to get rid of, you know, I suggested that we get rid of the hardwood that was put in. And that hardwood goes for the entranceway into the little hallway that rounds the corner to go into the garage and then goes into the kitchen. And then there's that hardwood in the kitchen. Well, it's a very light colored wood and we're not light colored wood people. So I said, why don't we just at least have them do the entire floor that's all out here, which then they can just cut it off at the kitchen and we can not do the kitchen at the time. Although she did go through and find stuff that she likes for the kitchen as well. And I said, well, we'll have to have somebody come in here and take a look at everything because it might just be less expensive to have them just do everything all at once rather than piecemeal it you know, and come back some other time and all that shit. So cart before the horse, of course, because we're not ready to do any of that right this moment. But it is now all been decided. Now we just have to find somebody to come in and do it. So, yeah, that's exciting. I mean, we got a lot done this morning. You know, it sucks because I was hoping that I could just go buy the knobs and, and we'd be done with it. Unfortunately, they need to be ordered. So, you know, everything has to wait. So we'll probably do all that next weekend. I'm also going to be looking for a handyman. For those of you that are watching, and there probably aren't many of you, but that know me from my, my military time in the Navy, you know that I was notorious for shocking myself and or blowing shit up when it came to electricity. So huh, I don't know, even though I could do the sconces and the like the chandelier and all that kind of shit, I don't know that I want to because and here's the thing. In the kitchen, there is a fluorescent light and an ugly chandelier. We don't need the chandelier. We never turn it on. I hate fluorescent lighting. Like I absolutely, like from my childhood, I hate fluorescent lighting. I hate that freaking hum. I want that shit out of there. So I think I might just hire somebody to come in there, rip that freaking ugly ass humming fluorescent shit out of there. And then we'll just put a normal like dome light in there for all I care and get that taken care of as well. Because again, I hate fluorescent lighting. If you hadn't picked up on what I'm saying, I hate fluorescent lighting and I want it out of that freaking house. So that's a little bit, well, that's not a little bit, that's way the hell beyond my scope of, of ability to do shit. Now I want to run this person off the road because they're driving slow as shit because they're looking at their phone. Honey, if you can't chew gum and walk at the same time, spit the gum out, Fucking idiot. Everything's moving full steam ahead. Not gonna worry about the patio until at least next spring. You know, for now, I'll just keep it weed whacked to a non-jungle 
conformity and all will be well. Things are moving right along, like I said, and I'm happy that, that at least took the time to pick all that shit out and order it. Now I'll spend some time on Nextdoor, the, the website for neighborhoods, this, you know, like this weekend, and see if I can't come up with somebody that is reasonable, trustworthy, and professional enough that I will allow to come into my house and put all this crap in, and then I don't have to deal with it. Yay. All right. Now, the other thing that I'm doing is I'm actually on my way to Pleasure House Point, which I haven't done for a while. It's hazy out. It, there's like not full on sunshine, which is good, but it's 80 degrees and, and the humidity went back up. Boo. So it's supposed to maybe rain, I guess, but we've been under a flood watch most of the week <laughs> and it hasn't rained a drop. So I'm not buying into that. We'll see what happens when it happens. But I did bring my A7R4 with the 200 to 600 because I'm birding, but I also brought the ZVE10 and I'm uh, using this uh, Yulon Z0, whatever the hell it is, 07 travel tripod, if, if you want to call it that, just for shits and giggles. I want to see how that works out in the field. And this would be the perfect opportunity that be the perfect opportunity for it so i do have the zve 10 i'm obviously using the dji wireless mic because i that's what i'm using and i have the 10 to 50 power zoom f4 lens on here with my variable nd filter the last little bit of exciting news is that the fall cam plate mechanism for the crane m3 is out for delivery i should have that by the time i leave here and then i will put that together and test it and show you hopefully how wonderful it is and then the crane m3 build is done because i will have that perfect plate on there to allow me to just use my square peak design fall cam whatever plates on there that i have a billion of and i also have that little mechanism put on there so i can plug the power into it which is on here for now because i'm just using this because i've been using the uh active stabilization because you know with a 10 or 11 millimeter lens there's just a, a shit ton of room on it and it you know it's better than nothing that's that let's hit pleasure house point and go look at some birdies well it didn't take long whilst we were talking i'm sure you heard the ding of of my email and that fall camp piece has been delivered so i'll definitely pick that up on the way back and get all that shit going so yay all right boom I just passed the threshold. Let the fun and relaxation begin. Big great blue heron over here. Very cool. He's a big one. There's also a uh, yellow crown night heron just right here. I didn't even see him. Okay, one thing is for certain, really got to make sure that this orca thing on this tripod is tightened down because it was already loosened. I'm lucky I didn't lose this. Unfortunately, all of this stuff is wet. The water must have completely come over here and flooded, which means that everything back there is going to be squishy, and I, I'm just not prepared for that. All right, I think I gotta get wet. Okay, so I just got completely drenched. It's so squishy. Everything was underwater and the mud was very deep. So my vans are soaked now. Nothing I can do about it. So I might as well just go ahead and walk and get as wet as I need to. Hi, so sadly, I have lost my transmitter. It popped off. I don't know where. I just realized it when I, after I crossed the water and started rounding the bend, and I moved this and saw that it wasn't there. I was hoping that it was going to be right there. There are a couple places that I stopped, but it wasn't, which means I could have lost that anywhere in the last mile, which sucks. So now I'm going to trace my steps and go back and hope that I lost it here in like the white sand and not in the woods. Well, would you look at that? However, comma, 
now I have no idea of where the magnet is. You'd think it would be somewhere close to where this fell. All right, so I lose the magnet, find the magnet, then I lose the entire transmitter and there's no magnet on it. And it fell around here, which means technically the magnet should be somewhere around here, right? But in the grand scheme of things, I'd rather lose that little ass magnet again rather than the freaking transmitter. Okay, so what a week, huh? Like I said, I lost the magnet, found the magnet, then I lose the transmitter, then miraculously find the transmitter, but still lose the magnet. Okay, I had to switch to my S22 Ultra to show you this, but here is the new plate. Can't really see much under there, but it's there. And as you can see, that camera is totally balanced. I do not have the power on. It is balanced the way that it should be, perfectly without power. So that when you turn the power on, the motors do not have to work that hard to keep it the way that it is right now. Now here's the other thing that I wanted to talk about, and that is those stupid little plates. Unfortunately, all plates are not created equal. They are slightly different. So the plate, the quick plate that goes in there is different and they supply one. It's one of their F38 Peak Design style plates. It is shaped just different enough so that if I tried to take the camera and mount it to the PG Tech ball head, it's too small and it will not grab. If I use the PG Tech plate and try to put it in here, it is too, I don't want to say big, but it's just, it doesn't fit. It won't hold. You can't get it in. Sometimes it's just a matter of a, of, of a slight angle, like a bevel that they put into the plate and, and it just makes it so that it doesn't work. What I did was I took the plate that came with this part that I got today and I put it on the camera because it's more important that it works here. And then I took the little Arca clamp that I got to work on the old plate that didn't work and I mounted it to just a standard old little twisty ball head thing here and then I mounted it into the PGY Tech thing so that way I can still use the Mantis pod with the power setup that I have and uh, you know it, it'll work well enough. So the plate does go in there, I've already tested it, it goes in there and it screws down nice and tight. Now when I was out earlier today obviously at Pleasure House Point I kept saying that on that you know, Ulanzi uh, 07 carbon fiber tripod that you had to keep checking to make sure that like this portion here was tightened down because a couple of times I caught it and it was very loose. So it does loosen up and that's just because it's a different plate. So when they say universal plate, they're full of shit. They're not universal. They're all slightly different. And it's probably a way to get you to buy more F38 plates. But since I've already bought a shit ton of the Peak Design plates, and I've gotten other plates that come with other things, and I've got PGY Tech plates, and now I've got a fall cam plate. I'm not buying any more plates. I'm gonna make it work the way that it does. I'm gonna go test it in the Forerunner to see if it fits because it's another Mantis pod. And if it doesn't fit, then that means I've gotta change out that freaking uh, ball head in the Forerunner as well. I'll be right back and I'll let you know. Okay, sadly, the, the PGY Tech Mantis Pod ball head that I went out and bought does not work either on the Mantis Pod, nor does it work on the setup that I had in the Forerunner. So what I did was since I had two of these Ulanzis, the inverted ball head, I tried that out. That other one I took off the Platy Pod and put that one in the Forerunner. So now I know that if I try to mount here in the Forerunner or on the gimbal or on the Mantis pod, I've tested them all out. They all work now and life is a peach. So there's the plate on the bottom and you can see the fall cam thing. And then up close and personal, here is the new fall cam quick release that this entire mechanism basically disconnects 
off the bottom of here and then you can see how thin it is and how small it is and you can adjust it in or out like this direction or that direction sorry this is really awkward to hold all this shit but then once you get that all set and everything is pretty much at this point set you know i have the camera completely balanced on here as long as i don't change any of these settings and i don't move this plate from where it is then all i should have to do is just take the camera all i did was snap it into place and now it's completely balanced so i should never have to balance this again unless something changes and then of course i have the little fall cam thing down here so i can take the power brick and, and move it from the mantis pot over to here which will then power the gimbal which then in turn powers the camera okay sorry for the shaky footage it's impossible to do this with one hand but you get the idea finally got that stupid thing which is something that should have been in the damn crane package but it isn't so screw you zune tech for doing that now several gimbals in a row just make one with a damn arca compatible plate like this and everybody will be happier okay that's it for this i'm going to switch back to the normal camera now and finish this out okay here's the deal i have been all over the freaking place today as you can tell from this video i have done this that and the other thing i had a great time in pleasure house point i haven't been there in a long time so i wrecked my shoes it was very squishy and and the mud like i literally like sunk down into the mud so i probably have to throw those away uh but it was a lot of fun i did in fact lose this and found it again but what i did was i took this little plate that's probably almost like almost twice as big as the one that originally goes with this so i took this from my road wireless go one and now it covers the entire almost the entire back length of, of that clip so that's what i'll use going forward but I still have to be mindful of, of the fact that I can peel this thing off of me, myself with my straps. At least I found the freaking transmitter because that would have sucked. Anyways, okay, so lots of fun at Pleasure House Point. Then I came back here and that's when I dicked around with that plate. The plate is perfect on the Crane M3 now. Uh, I mean, that's the way it should have been. I'm not going to go into a rant though. It's good. I got this all fixed up now. This works just fine. It sucks that I actually really like the Mantis Pod ball head, but now I can't use it. So I've got two of those now that, that I got that I can't use because it won't work with the stupid plate that came with the Ulanzi or with the fall cam thing. So I had to actually go into the Forerunner and get rid of that PGY Tech Mantis Pod ball head and put another one of the Ulanzi inverted ball heads. So one here for the A7 IV, one in the Forerunner, and then just this uh, left photo one that I got off of Amazon. And it works just fine, so I don't need to order another freaking Yulanzi one. Ugh, I'm buying all these little... See, it's all these little accessories that really add up. And, and that's why the magical drawers are just overflowing with, with magical items that maybe three years from now will come in handy. Okay, so all of a sudden now it's almost six o'clock. And here I am still sputtering out the, the end of this video. The bottom line is, is that today was a really busy, but productive and fun day. But that's it. I need to get this video done. And if you're watching it, I got it done because it's Sven Gulli night and I still need to eat dinner at some point. So that's all you get. Although you got a lot today. So if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. As always, thanks for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember, kids, forward and up.